If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Many of us have certainly heard this quote, but have you ever thought that this also applies to the journey of rockets? Indeed, as powerful as SpaceX's Starship may be, it won't be able to make it all the way to the moon, never mind Mars, all by itself. To get into orbit and then continue its journey, each Mars or moon-bound Starship will have to meet up in orbit with its brethren in order to fuel up for the journey beyond Earth. This is also the biggest challenge for the Starship program. So, how exactly do they fuel each other? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. The last half century has witnessed unprecedented growth in our understanding of space both as a frontier and a domain of endless opportunities. Yet, as with any frontier, there are challenges and barriers that must be overcome. One such challenge is the current limitation of space vehicle endurance and mobility. The Elon Musk solution? In space, refueling or refueling in orbit? Why in space refueling is a game changer? The most obvious benefit of refueling is the ability to extend mission duration. Spacecraft, whether satellites, crewed missions, or probes, are constrained by their fuel capacity. Once its fuel is expended, the mission ends and the satellite often becomes space debris. Refueling allows these assets to extend their operational life, making missions more flexible and cost-effective. Currently, spacecraft must carry all the fuel they will ever use from the moment they launch. With refueling, Spacecraft can instead be designed for increased payload capacity and more capable scientific instruments, thereby fundamentally increasing their value-generating potential. In space, refueling can be especially boon for deep space exploration. As we set our sights on destinations like Mars and beyond, the capability to refuel vehicles on their journey becomes a strategic advantage, reducing the need for excessively large and heavy launch vehicles. The first goal of Starship is to reach the Moon and even further, to Mars or other deep space locations. With significant distances involved in space travel, spacecraft will always require large amounts of propellant for their extended journeys. More importantly, with a reusable rocket, the majority of the fuel is typically consumed by the turbocharger and the spacecraft during the launch to reach orbit. At this point, there is usually only a limited amount of fuel remaining for the spacecraft to perform an atmospheric aerobrake, utilize a parachute, or the belly flop maneuver and land. This necessitates the need for in-orbit refueling of the Starship during the extensive journey to ensure an adequate fuel supply for propulsion. It would be similar to gas stations along the road when we travel from one place to another. Or if you've got a Tesla, you know, like a supercharger. The refueling process begins with the launch of a partially fueled starship from the Earth's surface. Once in orbit, another starship is sent to rendezvous with the first spacecraft. This carefully choreographed dance of two starships, maneuvering in space marks, a departure from the conventional approach of launching fully fueled vehicles from the ground. When the two starships are docked or connected, the propellant will then be transferred from the refueling vessel to the target spacecraft. This is called the modified side-to-side -side fueling method, as opposed to the previous end-to-end -end or colloquially coined butt-to-butt -butt fueling method. This alternative fueling maneuver aims to address potential challenges and improve the stability and efficiency of the process. The side-to-side -side refueling mechanism deviates from the previous design's reliance on a balance advantage, where fluids flow downwards with a slight eulogy push in one direction. By switching the propellant full drain lines to the side, SpaceX aims to achieve a more practical and effective refueling operation. With large enough pipes, on the order of 2050 chem or 820 in, connecting each starship's tanks, SpaceX should have no trouble transferring 1,000 plus tons of propellant in a handful of hours. Ultimately, that means that settled propellant transfer, even at the scale of Starship, should incur a performance tax of no more than 2050 tons of propellant per refueling. All transfers leading up to the worst-case 1600-ton scenario should also be substantially more efficient. 
Overall, that means that fully refueling an orbiting Starship or depot with 1,200 tons of propellant, requiring anywhere from 8 to 14 plus tanker launches should be surprisingly efficient, with perhaps 80% or more of the propellant launched remaining usable by the end of the process. While this refueling concept offers a fresh perspective and potential advantages, there are still several issues that need attention and resolution for a more successful outcome. For example, the ability to transfer highly volatile substances in the microgravity environment of space. Liquid oxygen and liquid methane are between spacecraft in orbit. Methane and oxygen need to be stored at extremely low temperatures to maintain their liquid state, which requires advanced insulation and cryogenic systems. While the concept holds immense potential for enabling long-duration missions and expanding our presence in space, the lack of comprehensive testing poses a significant hurdle. To achieve successful refueling at the required scale, it is crucial to establish protocols and technologies that guarantee efficient and reliable propellant transfer between vehicles. To solve this problem, SpaceX has actively collaborated with NASA to secure funding and develop essential components, such as cryogenic fluid couplers. These couplers serve as critical interfaces that allow the transfer of propellants between spacecraft. Furthermore, connecting two rockets in orbit is a complex task that requires precise coordination and maneuvering. The sheer magnitude of this endeavor, involving two massive spacecraft moving at high speeds in the vacuum of space, poses significant challenges. That's why ensuring a successful connection and transfer of propellant between the two starships demands exceptional engineering, navigation, and communication capabilities. SpaceX has also demonstrated its expertise in orbital rendezvous and docking through the Crew Dragon spacecraft's successful missions to the International Space Station. The experience gained from these missions, where the Crew Dragon autonomously docks with the ISS provides a valuable foundation for SpaceX to tackle the challenge of connecting two starships in orbit. The company's track record of reliable docking operations serves as a testament to its capabilities in overcoming intricate space maneuvers. Finally, how many launches will SpaceX need to refuel a starship to the Moon and Mars? SpaceX estimates that 1,200 tons of fuel, consisting of both liquid oxygen and methane, must be used to complete a lunar landing especially if it's supposed to be able to leave the Moon again. This means that Starship has to be refueled a total of 14 times in orbit to have enough fuel. During a launch, Starship uses most of its fuel to reach orbit after separation from the booster stage. But this plan has proven controversial in the space transport industry, as Blue Origin, owned by Amazon's Jeff Bezos, took exception to the Starship, potentially needing 14 launches to refuel in space. The company went so far as to blast the plan as preventing the U.S. from landing on the moon in a safe and sustainable way. Blue Origin then goes on to claim that SpaceX got preferential treatment when being selected for the Artemis program. This led to Elon Musk claiming in a tweet that the Starship will need only eight refuel rocket launches and even just four if the Starship is only half full. Musk further elaborated that even if this required 16 refueling flights, it wouldn't be a problem. SpaceX's orbital flights will still happen more often than Jeff Bezos with the stationary blue feather. Of course, not to brag, but SpaceX is confident enough that the company's plans will take humans to the moon for the first time since 1972. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.